Sand everywhere. Tell me what color this sand is. It's a tawny, light tan. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the water. What color is the water that you see? It's coming, rivulets are coming into it. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem to be ocean water or blue. It just, it's, it's a, has a brownish tint to the water. Mm -hmm. A brownish tint? Mm -hmm. Tell me more about this place. Take a look around. What else do you see besides the sand and this brownish water? Trees overhanging. Mm -hmm. Like southern trees, mm -hmm. some Spanish moss, uh, crepe myrtle. Mm -hmm. Look more. That's it's fine. becoming pretty much of a, a swamp. Like a swamp. Mm -hmm. And as you're observing this swamp, I'd like you to tell me if you feel that you have a body there. Uh, body that's watching it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what is this body that's watching it? Can you see your feet from where you are? They're barefooted. And they're barefooted. Are they male or female? Male. Mm -hmm. How old do you feel there? Um, I'm a child. Mm hmm. Tell me what you're wearing. Short pants. Mm -hmm. What else? That's all. That's it. Mm -hmm. And what do you look like? Oh, a little browner, sunburned. Mm -hmm. What color is your hair? Brown. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything in your hands? Are you holding anything? A uh, uh, little stick. Mm -hmm. What do you imagine this little stick is being used for? I've been splashing it in the water. Mm -hmm. Are you playing? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm chasing little hermit crabs. Is this how you have fun? Chasing the crabs? Uh, it is, yes. Mm -hmm. They sidle away. And then what do you do? I'm laughing. I chase them into the water. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about your adventures out here in this area. Uh, I don't have any history of adventures in the area that I know of. Mm -hmm. So what is it that they call you there? What is your name? My name? Mm -hmm. Sid. Sid. Mm -hmm. Sid, how old are you? Seven. Mm -hmm. So Sid, let's find out where it is that you live. I'd like for you to close that scene and see yourself in front of the place where you live. Okay, it's a it's a house. It's an old house. It's got thatch on it. Mm -hmm. What's this? It house? looks like. A, What's it made out of? I'm trying to figure. It. Oh, it's wood. Mm -hmm. It's a dark, weather-stained wood. Describe it for me. It has front door and windows, one window on each side of the door. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not big. Is there anything around the house? Like in front of it or on the sides? Anything interesting there? Kind of sandy soil. Mm -hmm. I don't see any weeds or trees. So let's go inside this house and see what's there. It's a wooden, wooden latch on the door. Mm 
and it opens into well, it's kind of a big room that's used in two halves, but there's no wall separating one side from the other. What's on each half? There's one side that's kind of a kitchen, fireplace, rustic. Mm -hmm. There's a bed on the other side. But it's all one one long room. Mm -hmm. Who lives in this place? There's a checkerboard quilt on the bed. Mm. What color is it? It's kind of black, white, and red uh, half pieces that were triangular, kind of sewn together. Mm -hmm. Basically white with these red and black halves forming a square. Mm -hmm. So Sid, do you see anybody there? No. So let's find out who lives there with you. I'd like for you to go to a time in that same lifetime, in that same place where you're eating a meal. See yourself there now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a big wooden table in the, well, it's in the kitchen side, but it kind of overlaps into the center. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a kid. There are two other kids. Our parents are there. Mm -hmm. Look at your... Look at your plate and see what you're eating. Spoon bread. Spoon bread. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. What are you eating with? Spoon. Mm -hmm. What's it made out of? Wood. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a coarse, gruely type spoon bread. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's not smooth. It's granular. Mm How's -hmm. it taste? Good. Mm. The butter, it's good. Wonderful. Now take a look around to your family. Tell me if you could see the, their eyes. Ooh. The eyes of the window to the soul. Do you recognize any of them in the life of Sam? Um. My mother's eyes. Mm -hmm. But she's got blondish hair. Mm -hmm. Who else do you see there? She's wearing a bonnet. Mm -hmm. My father, he has dark hair and work clothes like he's been working outside. Mm -hmm. What does your father do? Farm. Mm -hmm. Works with wood. Look into his eyes. Are they the eyes of anyone that's in the life of Sam? It looks like the eyes of a picture I have of a grandfather I never met. Mm. Your soul will recognize him. I don't. What about your brothers? I have a younger brother there. He must be five or He's making a lot of noise, banging. Look at his eyes and see if you recognize him. Not from anybody I know, no. Okay. And what about your other brother? 
I don't see another brother. Oh, you don't. What do you see? Is it just two of you? I have a sister. A sister, okay. She's older. She's helping mother. But I don't recognize her. Okay. Very good. How does it feel like to be in this home? Well, I get the impression that life is hard. Mm -hmm. That we parents have to work hard. That's kind of a pioneer. We're on the kind of in an inland area that's surrounded by a swamp. Mm -hmm. Trust your first impression. Where do you believe this place is? I don't know, but I associate it with the south, mm -hmm. southeast. Mm -hmm. Very good. What year is it? Early 1800. Okay, good. Is there anything else from that scene that's interesting or important? Well, I see the wooden and iron implements around the fireplace, pokers, a axe. Mm -hmm. Very good. So now, let's close that scene and let's move ahead, Sid, on to another important scene in your lifetime when something is impacting your life. Be there now. Where are you? I don't recognize it. I don't know. There's a triangular piece of rock or concrete in the road. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like I'm in an archaeological dig somewhere. Mm -hmm. Let's find out a little bit more about this. What are you doing there, Sid? I'm looking at an excavation. Mm -hmm. That's place where we've been digging. Mm -hmm. Is this what you do for a living? Not full time. Mm -hmm. What is this thing that you found? Well, it seems to be part of an old structure, mm -hmm. a previous building. Uh, too early to tell what it is, and we haven't excavated all around it yet, but it's struck me as kind of a little pyramidical shape top. Mm -hmm. We need to figure out what it is, how deep it goes. What's it made out of? Stone. So allow yourself to fast forward to see what this excavation reveals. Well, it digs down in this similar structures in the excavation. That kind of obelisks mm -hmm. that stick out every 15, 18 feet. They look like not supports of a building because they're pointed at the top. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. They got three of these that we found It must be about eight feet tall. Is there any writing on these? No. Mm -hmm. 
anything interesting about them besides the fact that they're separated a certain distance. Well, they could have been part of statues, it seems. Mm -hmm. they, they seem to have a base that we haven't fully excavated yet. Mm -hmm. what, what have you excavated? Just more block, building blocks, mm -hmm. outlines of rooms, Circular room. Mm -hmm. A circular room inside of this structure? Well, these structures are inside of the circular room. Mm -hmm. How large is this room? Oh, probably 20, 22 feet across mm -hmm. uh, circumference. Mm -hmm. and these three obelisks are within it. It doesn't resemble anything I'm familiar with. Is there a roof over this, these structures? No. No, they're open. And just a low wall. Mm -hmm. That kind of outlines a room. I don't know what they would be. They don't seem to be lined up in any particular way. Mm -hmm. They do form a triangle. Mm -hmm. Very good. So let's continue with this excavation and see what's the final result of all your excavating. Well, some years later. Mm -hmm. It seems to be part of a ancient temple. There are pillars in other places and parts of buildings that did have roofs. Mm -hmm. But I have no idea what three obelisks would mean. They don't seem to be idols. There are no altars associated with them. What country are you in? Middle East. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it is a country. Mm -hmm. It's an area? Well, I guess it would be part of Syria. Mm -hmm. What year is this? Gee. Just your first impression. 19 early. Mid-1900s. Mm -hmm. Very good. I think I'm German. Mm. German excavation. What do they call you there? Klaus. Klaus. Anything else that's interesting about this sea? No. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's close that scene and let's move to another important scene in that same lifetime when something is impacting your life. I'm a professor in Germany. Mm -hmm. What do you teach? Ancient history. Mm -hmm. What is your lesson uh, about today? Oh my. Ancient history is about, involves the Greeks and the Romans, the occupations in the Middle East and the temples they built, the monuments they set up.
tell me more. What is happening on this day? On this day, I think it's a graduation day and all the students are assembled and the awards are being given and I'm called upon to give an award for the best paper in, on ancient history to a young man who I had worked with in studies. Can you see this young man in front of you? Yes, he's a uh, Looks like he's a late teenager, mm -hmm. brown hair, kind of ordinary looking. Do you recognize his eyes in anyone that you've known before in the life of Sam? <laughs> he has some resemblance to my brother that I saw previously. Mm -hmm. But he's much older than my brother. Mm -hmm. Very good. So now let's close that scene and let's move to another scene in that same lifetime when something important is happening. Be there now. I think I've died. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened. I'd been sick a while, and the university is recognizing me. They've got a special assembly, and then dedicating something in my name, and I don't know what that name is. Mm -hmm. Klaus. But I had taught there a long time. Listen to the speech as they're talking about you. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do they say? How my students would remember me for the work I had done in archaeology. I don't think I have any family mourning me. Mm -hmm. I think I outlived everyone. So let's find out, Klaus, what happens after you leave that body? What happens after you leave that assembly? Where do you go? Hmm. Follow your soul's path. What happens next? I'm in a council room with people somehow. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to be physical or earthly. How many do you see? Oh, there must be eight here. Mm -hmm. What do they look like? Airy. Mm -hmm. the, the, you can see through them, mm -hmm. but you can still identify them. It's interesting. Do they have gender? Well, these are all men. Mm -hmm. uh, That's interesting. I hadn't seen this before, that they don't have any form and yet they're identifiable. Mm -hmm. What do you look like there? I'm the same. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a sense of self. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So that's what it's called. It's, it's a, you'd have to say spiritual body or existence. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what it is that you're doing with this Council of Eight. Oh my. We're, we're deciding on where a, one of the members is to go next. Mm -hmm. Do you sit on this council? Yes. Mm -hmm. And he, the choices are several. Mm -hmm. Involve different planets or galaxies. He doesn't know what he wants to do. How do you help him? Well, we're kind of joking with him now, laughing, wondering where we'd like to go if we were, if it were our turn to be assigned somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. How do you assign the people to go? Uh, apparently there's a a time like having a birthday I mean, it's just you know that the time has come mm -hmm. what's and, the, but what's the purpose a new experience mm -hmm. something they hadn't done before places they hadn't been uh, experiences they hadn't experienced mm -hmm people they had helped. Is it possible <clears throat> to go to several places at one time? Or do you just go to one place? Oh, I think a decision is made to go to one place. Okay. But I'm not sure where a person ends up. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what happens today while you're helping this individual. What goes on? He is laughing. He wants to go to a place where he can experience something else than just simply being a man. Mm -hmm. Or a woman. Or an animal. And he's considering all of them. <laughs> Does the council give him any advice? Members of the council have had experiences. Mm -hmm. that they share with him what it's like. <laughs> kind of encouraging him or joking with him to try them all. <laughs> <laughs> That's my. What happens next? I think that I sense that I'll be making this decision before long, maybe next in line, mm -hmm. and putting the questions to myself. If this fellow has these options, what are my options and what should I do? Mm -hmm. So now let's go to that time when you are in that same place and tell me what's happening when you're next in line I was given an option of earth mm -hmm. have, you, it, have you been there before I think so mm -hmm. yes perhaps several times. So what is the purpose of coming to Earth? A spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. How an awakening that, that there's still more to learn. There's always more to learn. What do you learn when you're in, on Earth? A 
when you learn how to cope with situations, with frustrating people, keep your sanity in, t in times of turbulence. You're looking for a way to find a country that, a place that's moved beyond warfare. History seems to have been repeated so often that I don't want to go to a place where it's just more of the same. Mm -hmm. So how do you determine what country, what family you go to? Well, I don't think it's completely foreseen, mm -hmm. but you can choose to have a start in a country that's secure and peaceful and hope you can keep it that way. Mm -hmm. And I chose Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what happens before you go there. How are you sent off? I don't know, you have to identify a family mm -hmm. and choose a family. And there are people there that you've been familyed with before. Mm. So how do you choose this family? What's the actual process of knowing who to choose? Oh my. Let's go through that. You know the people involved. You know what they're like and what you can expect. And you know what you're getting into. But you want a family that will take care of you as a child. So you choose those who you know to have been good parents elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So let's find out your process of choosing this family in Switzerland. How do you identify your mother and father? How do I identify them? I don't know that I'm the one that identifies them. Mm -hmm. All right. It's kind of a, a given mm -hmm. that some forces that know what I'm like and what they're like and what I need and what they need that unites us, brings us together. Mm -hmm. A form of providence is not my choice. Okay. But it seems to work out. Mm -hmm. So see yourself there at that moment before your birth. Let's find out what happens on the spiritual side before you come to earth. Well, I think they're strong Protestants. Mm -hmm. that bring me up in a Calvinistic environment. Mm -hmm make me a member of the church and grew me to be a minister. What will you be learning from that lifetime? What is the purpose of it? Oh, how to speak German. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, I feel I feel familiar mm -hmm. as though I had been in Germany before, mm -hmm. but things are getting 
mean and out of hand. Mm -hmm. What year is it now? Oh my. Seems to be shortly after World War I. Mm -hmm. And everybody's unhappy. They have lost the war. Times are hard, they want peace. But everybody has to. Huh. What is your role there? Hey, just to grow up in it. But I don't. I think my life is short. Tell me what happens. It's an illness. By the time I hit six, I didn't know I had come into the world for such a short period. Mm -hmm. That I need to go out and start over again. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what happens after you leave that body of that six-year-old. Where do you go? Are you back with your counsel again? No. Where do you go? It's a different place entirely. Mm. Different experience. So tell me where you are now. I don't know where I am. It's, it's just ethereal. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure it is a place. It's kind of a state of being mm -hmm. that has no geographical location. What does it feel like? Free. Immense mm -hmm. freedom. Um, you're very airy. You're unlimited. You can go anywhere be anything. You just ex ex exist as huh, without limitations. Mm -hmm. How does that feel to you? Ex exhilarating. Mm -hmm. Did you choose to be in this place? No. I mean, this is something entirely new. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I feel just the presence of a wind rushing through. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, everything is just spiritual and ethereal. And in a sense, you don't think in terms of body or place. One just is. Mm -hmm. Are you by yourself in this place? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you to just soak in that beautiful feeling. Look it and feel that wonderful feeling of being. Reminding all of your cells, all of the memories, activated with how beautiful it feels to be and not do. And after you're being for a while, let's see what happens. Where do you go to next? To who I am. To a new life. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this new life. It's who I am now. Mm -hmm. My childhood and growing up and World War II mm -hmm. and teaching and retiring and learning and becoming aware of spiritual realities I had never considered before. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So as you review this life, I'd like for you now to imagine yourself going into that dream state that you do each evening. And let's find out what happens, who you meet with, while you are not being Sam. Where do you go? You can't say where. Mm -hmm. Who do you do you meet with anyone? Yes, there are others there. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what you do when you're not in this body. What do you do when you travel in your dreams? Who's there with you? I think I'm alone. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. My dream world when I travel is it's kind of out of the body. Exploring realities beyond the earth. Mm -hmm. Kind of wishing I could do know it more and better. Let's locate where the mind is that Sam has. Where is this mind located? Does it connect anywhere? It's part of a complex of all the minds, of all the people, it's kind of an, a, an assembly of, of all the spirits of everyone. That seem to unite for mutual strength and clarity. to know they're part of a whole and a mystery. That there are powers above them and beyond them. That they may, they still have to learn about through other lives. New experiences, new densities, new, new living life with new awarenesses that well, like a, a dog has senses of smell that humans never know. Well, there's an awareness, a spiritual awareness, sensitivity to lives and happenings that are out there to be learned, but we just have no way of knowing them yet. So what, you do, what do you do as you access this information in your dream state? Try to incorporate it into what I've learned in the non-dream state. Mm -hmm. Is this the same place where your memories are stored? I wish I knew. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. Let's find out where these memories are stored. Keep diving into that awareness. There must be a self that's bigger than the brain. That's an accumulation of the minds of all the lives that have preceded it. And perhaps they're living simultaneously. But the identity to identify with earthly existence kind of escapes me. Mm -hmm. So let's ask for some help now. I'd like to ask for your guide to come and present itself to you. It could be in any shape or form. 
Good. I want to thank them for their guidance. Mm -hmm. So allow your guides their presence. to manifest. They may just speak with you. And let's find out some of these answers. My guides, my graces. Mm -hmm. Allow them to present themselves to you. The name Joseph comes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why. All right. But I want to thank him. Mm -hmm. Who else is there? Laura. Mm -hmm. A name not familiar to me. And Grace. Mm -hmm. These seem to have assumed some responsibility for me mm -hmm. and enjoy looking after me. So let's have the graces show you a picture in your mind of when they were there to assist you. What are they showing you? 1949, I came down with typhus fever. Mm -hmm. And it was a tough time. And it was a time that oromycin was first introduced. And that pulled me out of it. So I'd like for you to see yourself there and use your spiritual eyes and tell me what you see around you while you're sick. Who's there? Dr. Cathcart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the nurses and these spiritual entities that are more like sunbeams. Mm -hmm enlightening the situation. Now that you know your, their names, their signature, vibration, can you identify if it's the same three? Joseph seems to be, but mm -hmm. not the other two. Okay. So do they come and go throughout your lifetime, different ones? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's too much of a job maybe for one to babysit all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Joseph, Laura, and, and Grace is, are the ones accompanying you at this time? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Good. Do they have any other information for you? They like the way I'm positive mm -hmm. and greet people who when they say have a good afternoon I respond, well, have a good life. Don't settle for an afternoon. Mm -hmm. Have a good life. And they've encouraged me to say that. Mm -hmm. And to greet each day with another day of grand and glorious opportunities. Can, you, can you ask them something? If there is a spiritual reason for having lived 93 good years. They've heard the question. Mm -hmm. Yes, to reach this level of spiritual awakening that would or couldn't have happened prior to this in terms of the situation I was in or the people I knew. Then my son John has come to this time. 
perhaps to guide us, to pioneer in this area. And how can Sam best help others in the remaining time that he has here? The only way he knows how. Happiness, positiveness, joy, love, acceptance, without discrimination, a recognition that God is in everybody and everybody is God. And that we are all experiencing this wonderful life together. Mm -hmm. Very good. Do the guides have anything else to say before I ask to speak with his higher self? Apparently not. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. So I'd like to speak now with that voice within, the higher self, the one who has been helping Sam his entire life. Do I have permission to ask these questions? Okay. Thank you very much. I know you could have shown Sam many different lifetimes today. Why did you show him the one of that little boy that started out in the swamp? Why that one? He needed to know that he had experienced that time in that place, mm -hmm. that he had a part in the developing of the rural countryside in South Carolina. Mm, so that was South Carolina. I didn't know that until now. Mm -hmm. What year was that? That was early 1800s. Mm -hmm. Anything else about that lifetime that would be interesting for him to know? He was a frontier fighter. He participated in expansion and growth in government. Mm -hmm. And his name was Sid? Or is that what they called him? Sid? Mm-hmm. He did like to be called Sidney. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Then why did you show him the one of the professor excavating? may account for his lifetime interest in excavation. Mm -hmm. He's already done that. Yeah, I, he's tried it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Decided he didn't like it. So after all that excavation, he went into teaching? Yes, it was too hot, dusty, dirty mm -hmm. to dig all the time. <laughs> <laughs> So, is that where he gets some of his experience for teaching in this lifetime? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that how Klaus is influencing him now? That lifetime? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Is there anything else from that lifetime that's influencing him now? Well, to know the joys and limitations of teaching. Mm. Okay. Uh. Very good. Then he went into the council and he saw himself as one of the council members. Can you tell him about that experience? Does he do that often? He's been on many committees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
and counseled many. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so while he's living a lifetime here, does an, an aspect of him still remain in the council? Or does he leave the council when he comes to a, another lifetime? Oh, he leaves the council. Mm-hmm. Does he go back ever? I don't know. I think that remains to be seen. Okay, very good. What about now the the one about this the child that dies early, that he had, was meant to do a lot more, but his life was cut short. But why was that a short life in Switzerland? Makes him wonder about the short life of his daughter. Ah, mm-hmm. And what that means, and wonder how she's doing. How is she doing? Debbie Dow. Mm-hmm. She lived seven weeks and made a lasting impression on her parents. Mm-hmm. Is Debbie here today to say anything to her father? No. No, I don't think so. Is there a message? Only that all is well. Mm -hmm. And she's thrived in other lives. She's moved on. Mm -hmm. How is Anne doing? How is Anne doing? Mm -hmm. She's had a freedom, a freedom from Alzheimer, a freedom to sing, a freedom to be influential in any group of spirit she's a part of. Mm -hmm. Does she have a message today for Sam? She forgives me. Mm-hmm. I wasn't sufficiently sensitive to all her needs all the time. And that has bothered me. How does that feel to be forgiven? We all need to be forgiven. Mm-hmm. And to know that you're forgiven and forgive yourself is key. Mm -hmm. So are we ready ready to forgive yourself now? Yes. All right. So I'm going to put my hand on your chest and I want you to pull out all of those feelings that you've had for so long, of everything that you've done that you felt you could not forgive yourself. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you can correct what happened. It just means that you don't have to suffer with that burden anymore. Allow that to be lifted from every cell of your body and give it to me. And tell me when I have it all. Yes. All right, we're going to take that and send it to the universe. Now there's a big vacant space there. What would you like to fill that with? Oh, love and peace and hope. And let's put a fire hose of love and peace and hope. Have it fill every cell of your body. Imagine it going into your heart and just pumping it throughout your entire being. Feeling that love coming in from the Creator. Knowing that you are perfect just the way you are. That there is hope every moment that you breathe. There is love as you connect with the oneness. And there's peace, knowing that you, when you live in the now, that's all there is. It's perfect. And let's seal that in. Let me speak with your higher self. Sam brought many questions today. Are you willing and able to answer these questions? Yes. Very good. He asks, in the light of previous lives, possibly parallel lives, and the concept of the higher self, how is he to understand his personal identity. 
as one, that we're all one, life is one, death is one, and, and, and nothing is lost. All exists, all memories. Where are these memories? He wants to know if they exist beyond the brain life. Of course. Mm -hmm. Where are they located? In the cloud, spiritual cloud of mm -hmm. a collected memory. And so much, you can get so much knowledge on a very small disk, a lifetime of memory can be retained in a, just a drop of matter. Mm -hmm. And it's all there. And all to be collected and experienced. And to be seen as you enter the new life. As to where you've been and what you've been. How you've been. And how you've responded to everybody in every situation. Platform to build on. But these memories, they're not readily accessible to us as human beings. There's a forgetfulness when we come here on Earth. Why is that? Why can't we ask, access these memories? It distinguishes humanity from the spirit world. We, we could have a physical life with eternal memories. Why is that? Huh. I think this world something of an experiment. Mm. An experiment in evolution, in learning, and in becoming increasingly peaceful increasingly spiritual, increasingly Christ-like. Mm -hmm. How are we doing? Poorly. <laughs> it's an individual thing. Mm -hmm. And so many individuals seem to be immune to spiritual insight. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Is that natural or has it been done by society? Society plays a large part. People have done it. Depends on one's parents, one's environment, one's education. And the best has not been communicated everywhere. Like so much, it's a privilege of a few. Mm -hmm. Now, Sam got into a path of spirituality from very young. What was the purpose of his, him going into that? To lead him away from a career in the Navy in which he would not have been happy. Mm. And to introduce him to the discipline of the church, which never satisfied him and to show him that there's still more to learn, more to experience. Now he's lived a robust life. Did he choose this consciously to live this long? There's some pride in it, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He has enjoyed it and Yes, he, he likes living mm -hmm. and makes it contagious and uh, doesn't see why it can't continue. <laughs> <laughs> now, some who may meet him may wonder, does he have a secret to life, to this longevity? There's people who are 30 years younger or more that aren't in as good as health, mentally or physically. What is the secret? All, 
all his life he's been happy mm -hmm. and hopeful and positive and having a goal to aim at that he's aspired to goals that were achieved and moved on to make no new goals mm -hmm. and uh, it's been a wonderful rich experience now we talked briefly before we started that our bodies are like the subjects of of God. We are God and our cells respond to us. Can you elaborate more about how our bodies keep healthy by talking to them, by loving them? Yes. And by not abusing them mm -hmm. and by appreciating life itself and being thankful and not having dark, unforgiving, hateful thoughts mm -hmm. that so much of the darkness of our being is, is brought about simply by mental attitude mm -hmm. and that it affects the body and everybody around it. So how we think really affects the body a lot. I think if you're happy, your body's happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the body does need some sleep and rest. Well, we found out what he does at night when he sleeps. He seems to go beyond. Can you tell him more about the physical body? What, it, what does it do? when it sleeps. Apparently it needs the rest and relaxation, mm -hmm. but reinvigorated by the spiritual connection. Ah, uh, that sleep may be a time in which all the experiences of life are compacted and stored in memory. that it's a time for the spirit to make contact with the larger spirit world mm -hmm. and yet reinforced and, and reanimated to continue the purpose of animating Sam. Mm -hmm. So who does he meet with when he sleeps? Where does he go? He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Okay. Does his higher self know? Do you no. know where he goes? Okay. I do not. Now, um, you talk about the fact that when one sleeps, it reinvigorates the body by having that spiritual co connection. Those people who need more sleep or less sleep, does that have to do with their spiritual connection? Quite likely. Mm-hmm. Like for those who meditate, that are connected. Meditation is a time to slow down and concentrate and think and control the mind. Mm -hmm. In some cases, it's very close to prayer. Mm -hmm. It's a, a recognition of the higher power of which we're a part. Mm -hmm and a willingness to be a part of that power and to let it work through us. Mm -hmm. So meditation is good, but I'm not sure that the long hours of meditation could be an escape from doing other things that you should be doing. Okay. Now Sam mentioned to me that sometimes when he does guided meditations, he clicks out. What is that? What's happening when he clicks out? Does he go somewhere? Ooh. It's not sleep. Mm -hmm. what, is, what happens to him when he's doing that? Well, it's kind of like driving. The, 
mind goes into a overpower or a gear that's not in use mm -hmm. and uh, seems to have an existence of its own. Mm -hmm. So does he need to worry about being clicked out when he's meditating? No. Mm -hmm. No. It's kind of a restful place? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it could be a sign of boredom. <laughs> <laughs> boredom, okay. <laughs> Very good. Very good. He has questions also about um, his, his body. Um, what is going on with his body? Is there anything there? Could you do a body scan on him? Yes, do. He needs a body scan. Mm -hmm. Could you do that spiritual body scan and see what, we, what reveals? Well, he's in good shape. He needs to continue losing the weight that he's made a good start on. And he knows that we don't need all the food we traditionally eat. Mm -hmm. And it's cutting down on that area. So it's not dieting, it's just a new understanding of what needs to be eaten and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, Are any of his guides working with him on his diet and nutrition? Yes. Yeah, he needs help. <laughs> okay, can I ask on his behalf for a uh, nutrition expert guide that will help him select the best foods for his body? He's, he knows. Mm -hmm. He's had a lot of that information and he's doing all right. All right, well, we can have the guide remind him. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, he asks about the, um, the MGUS. What's going on with that? He wants to know the... Well, that's a blood condition mm -hmm. in which there's a dominant amount of protein in the urine. Mm -hmm. And uh, as long as it stays in the urine and doesn't spill over into the blood, he's okay. Okay. And I think he's ought to be all right. It just needs monitoring. Okay. What's the origin of that? Why did this happen? Is he supposed to learn something from it? It's related to when he had a nephrectomy in 1989 and lost a cancerous kidney. Mm -hmm. uh, Did that trigger this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Was there some sort of fear, any thought there, that could have caused this? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what, what is it that he created with this fear? Did he create this condition? Unknowingly. Mm -hmm. uh, seems to have emerged about the time of the death of his wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where is this, this uh, form in his body? Where is it connected to? It's in the blood. In the blood. All right. It's in the blood. So knowing that he created this, he can also transform it. Yes. Mm-hmm. So let's find out what would be the best thing to transform this condition into rather than it being this condition in the blood. What would be the best thing to help him transform it into? Something that would help him. Exercise. Mm -hmm. So he can, we can transform that energy rather than it being to. I think more exercise. All right. More walking. All right. So let's use now that light 
from the divine, I'd like to request that light to come in through the crown of his head. And I'd like for it to begin the transformation of that MGUS into strength to allow him to exercise. To use that instead of being something that is in his blood, let's use that to transform it for something in his muscles. Allow that light to go through all of your bloodstream beginning the transformation. And I'd like for you to tell me from the inside what this transformation looks like. What do you imagine it to be look, looking like? An increase that it is invigorating uh, a day It needs more hydration. Mm -hmm. More hydration and more exercise. Very good. So let's transform this as this white light goes through him. Begin the transformation. And as he adds water to it, adds life to it, it will just increase it even more. Increase the healing and the energy to his muscles. Can we continue with this transformation at night while he sleeps? Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Now, as you scan his body, do you notice anything else that needs to be addressing? The pain in the left de deck muscle. Mm -hmm. What's the origin of that? It followed a short hospitalization. Mm -hmm. Does that have any consciousness to it? Is there? Y yes. All right. May I speak to it today? Yes. All right. So I'm going to bring my hand over to that area and bring it over, over, over. You can express yourself now. How long have you been there with Sam? Oh, six, seven months. Mm -hmm. And what is your name, please? Huh, William. William. Uh, William, how old are you? 37. Mm -hmm. And what year is it for you, William? 37. What year is that? Uh, 2017. 2017. So, William, what happened to you? I died. Mm -hmm. In what way? Excess. Excess what? Excess living and mm -hmm. alcohol and mm -hmm. drugs. Mm -hmm. So, William, after you died, what happened to your soul? Where did you go? Uh, I needed to escape. Mm -hmm. Where did you escape to? And to this healthy fellow that looked like he was not going to die. Mm. So what have you been doing to him? Making his neck miserable. Mm -hmm. And why is that? <laughs> I've made everyone miserable I've been around. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is, William? You're not very happy about yourself? I... Never have, no. Mm -hmm. Is there something missing in your life? Everything. Mm -hmm. Everything meaningful. Yeah. Well, William, inside of you is something that can make you very happy. Did you know that? I wish I knew what it was. Mm -hmm. well, I'm going to show you right now. Would you allow me to show you this? Oh, yes. All right. Well, inside of you, check out the little spark of light that's right there that you haven't even noticed. Can you see that spark? Yes. That spark is from the Creator. This is what created you, and you are part of that. William, I want you to begin making that spark of light bigger and bigger. 
And as you become bigger and bigger in that light, I want you to tell me how it feels. Freeing. Mm -hmm. Make it as big as you are and even bigger. Become one yeah. big giant light. Yes. Uh -huh. So how do you feel now? Are you miserable anymore? Uh, released mm -hmm. to move on. Very good. So go ahead and begin pulling all of your energy, please, from this man's body. Mm. Pull it all out. And I'm going to call in the angels of the white light. They're going to surround you. And tell me what they tell you, William. Continue pulling. Mm -hmm. Pull it out. Pull it out. Out by the roots. Mm -hmm. So, Sam, I want you to make yourself tiny and go inside that part of your body and tell me what it looks like from inside. What does it look all his attachment? Attachment is like a f black flag on the... Mm -hmm. On a muscle, on a swollen muscle. So go ahead and begin using either light or water, whatever you choose, to begin spraying that down and making it whole again and healthy. What would you like to use? Just a touch. All right, so go ahead and do that. And William, are you ready to go home now? Yes. What would you like to tell this man about what you've been Making him feel. I want to apologize. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and tell Say him. Say I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and tell him. I'm sorry, Sam. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it would be so painful for you all this time. But I need to move on. Mm -hmm. Sam, what would you like to tell him? He's forgiven. Very it's good. All, it's Very. over, over and past. Very good. So, William, I'd like for you to go out through the crown of his head right here, and Archangel Michael is there to take your hand and tell me when you see him. Okay, I've got him. All right, he's pretty big, isn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's going to take you right back to source. Tell me when you get there. I've arrived. Tell me what it's like. A new life. Mm -hmm. Freedom. So, ready, ready to move on. Very good. So from that place, now that you are connected with Source and have the energy, I'd like for you to beam down that light from Source into his neck, into the area where you were before. And go ahead and begin filling that space with that beautiful light. Healing it. And when you're done, let me know. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, William. May the light of the universe always accompany you. Thanks. And let me speak now with the higher self. How does his neck look now? Much better. Mm -hmm. No longer swollen or inflamed. Wonderful. Is there any other part of his body that needs attention like that today? Any other shadows? No, he's in good shape. Wonderful. Very good. Very good. He wants to know a little bit about why he was guided here today. He was ready. Mm -hmm. He was ready for the enlightenment. Mm -hmm. How can he enrich the quality of his consciousness? Doing more to help people who are in need, mm -hmm. to encourage, to share joy, positive happiness. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Kind of, kind of a simple task, isn't it? Yeah, it's every, every day. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Wonderful. Can you tell him if his DNA shows ancestries from other galaxies or planets? I'd say of course. Yes. So where are these? I'm sure he's wondering where he comes from. Distant Pleiades. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, 
There have been so many mm -hmm. visitors to this planet that there's been a lot of interbreeding. We're all part of the whole. So everybody has a little bit of DNA from others? From throughout the solar system, yes. Mm -hmm. He has a question about that. How often has Earth harbored civilizations from other planets or galaxies? Over millions of years. Hmm. Why is it that we don't know about it? <laughs> In our textbooks. Pride, blindness. Mm -hmm. um, our civilizations. Evolution has taken place at different times, different places, different speeds. Mm -hmm. There's vintages of it in all the religions and mythology, which we pass off as nonsense. Is mythology real? Yes, very. Mm -hmm. So there, there were gods from different types? There were, and uh, different powers and to be recognized and mm -hmm. identified. And the ancient people were, in a sense, more sensitive than we've been. Hmm. We've turned that off. To these powers, yes. Mm -hmm. So who are the powers that have helped Sam all this time? Huh. Besides his guides. Does he connect with some of these gods or goddesses? From well, mythology? The, the, Jesus, the goddess of the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. uh, they have guided him until he needed to go further mm -hmm. and become aware that uh, there were other lives, other times, other places. The reality of the sixth century of, of the sixth chapter of Genesis that civilizations that measured their lives in centuries rather than in decades, mm -hmm. and who, interestingly, whose names we know, are pretty much ignored. How is it that people lived so long before and they can't live that long now? Well, that was the intent. I mean, the shortness of life. The world has introduced all kinds of pollutions that take their toll on all forms of life, plants and animals and people. Mm -hmm. So were we meant to live a lot longer? Yes. Mm -hmm. But not necessarily the physical body. Okay. The eternal life is requires more than a physical body it has to be spiritual and mental. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about Atlantis? Huh. He wants to know if the people of Atlantis evolved on Earth or came from other other places, outer space. Well, there's a mixture, mm. like so many of the civilizations. And uh, they attained... Uh, great technical advances are capable of so much they misused it and but their presence is, will always be known and uh, they were just one part of ancient civilizations that dotted the whole planet mm -hmm. are we still being influenced by those from Atlantis? No. No. In memory only. In memory only. He wants to know what can he expects when he transitions to graduate life. <laughs> A lot more to learn. Mm. Places to visit. Powers to experiment with. Has this session today opened up new ideas for him? 
Well, that language is so primitive mm -hmm. that we need to know each other telepathically to get beyond this primitive earthbound experience to live fully and freely in the spiritual existence mm -hmm. and to hope for the new awakening that seems to be encircling the earth and to be a part of that. Very good. One other thing is how extensive is the U.S.'s secret space program? More than the government will ever admit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably Mars. Mm -hmm. Earth, I mean the moon, and other distant planets. Mm -hmm. I think that's been a very active secret involvement that, uh, which has made it utterly impossible for the United States ever to balance a budget. Mm. Because <laughs> all our money goes there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why the military needs so much money. Because <laughs> they're out in space. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, those technologies that they're using in outer space ever be brought here? Well, they result from insights from outer space. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing we've, we eventually may have come to them, but uh, we've learned them a lot faster yeah. because of whether willing or unwilling copying, mm -hmm. uh, we've been taught by higher civilizations. Mm -hmm. Good. Has Sam ever been in contact with any of these higher civilizations during his lifetime? He doesn't think so. <laughs> uh, what do you say? <laughs> they haven't made himself known to them. No? Okay. Good. Is there anything that I could have asked that I didn't, that you would like to tell him today? No. No. It's been a very satisfying mm -hmm. encounter. Mm -hmm. Do you, as this higher self, think it would be of benefit to put this on the internet for others to experience? I think it would be a benefit for others to experience this but not necessarily to be enlightened by anything I've said. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Is there anything else that you would like to tell Sam, me, or anybody else at this time? Appreciation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. My goodness. How do you feel? Rested, relaxed. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What do you remember? I'm going to switch those stones with something else while you tell me. I think that, uh, as far as I know, I remember everything. I'm going to switch these with these so we can ground you. That's shungite. Mm -hmm. That's a shungite. That's shungite. It's a grounding stone. So, what do you remember? Previous experiences. Mm -hmm. as the child and as a later experience, not very clear. Mm -hmm. But then as a German or Swiss uh, archaeologist. Mm -hmm. You know, I did my first sabbatical <coughs> working with Kathleen Kenyon in, Israel, in Jordan. Mm -hmm. Well, it was, it, it was Israel now, Jordan then on an archaeological dig, mm -hmm. and um, I discovered very quickly I couldn't take the heat. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel like you had been there, done that before, for some reason? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was long, hot, dusty, yeah. dirty. That's why you became a professor in that life. Well, I was a professor when I did but that, in that but life, yeah. I decided not to pursue it. <laughs> yeah, isn't that something? Yeah. How did it feel? Good? Yeah, sure, great. I'm good. Very relaxed. Yeah. No, no bathroom breaks. No bathroom. How long do you feel you're on this journey? 
Uh, about 40 minutes. An hour and a half. All right. So, how did it feel? That was interesting. It's um, <clears throat> to be able to kind of turn your imagination loose mm -hmm. and just flow. Yeah. And I don't know that I've ever done that before. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell everybody what you've done in your life because <clears throat> oh my. you're a very critical thinker. And a lot of people think that they cannot be hypnotized because they're very left brain, right? That's what you were kind of saying. Uh, yes, but <laughs> that has been debunked. There is no distinction between the <laughs> right and left brain. Okay, good. <laughs> so tell everybody what, what kind of things, experiences you've had in your lifetime, because you're a pretty interesting oh, fellow. Okay, well, uh, B-24 pilot um, during World War II. And so he was a fellow pilot with me yes. <laughs> in my last <laughs> life. <laughs> she was a fighter pilot. And how old uh, are you? I'm 93, and uh, I flew my first missions in combat when I was 20. Mm. So that was another life. Yeah. Since then, I have been a minister. Oh, I received an education mm -hmm. all, all the way through doctorate, and uh, ended up teaching for 40 years mm -hmm. and learning for the last 17. Isn't that something? <laughs> <laughs> After I taught all I knew, then I took up um, quantum physics and uh, this this lady's field. <laughs> <laughs> so it's never too late. <clears throat> never too late. Never too late to learn something yeah. new. Right, and never stop learning. Never ever. Right. This this is opening up everybody's eyes to a new never world. Never stop learning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And after having explored the Newtonian physics world, it's time to open up to the spiritual yeah. um, environment of which we are all a part and ignore far too much. Mm -hmm. So any, any advice for people who are getting into this new... Well, thing? it's nothing to be feared. Mm -hmm. It, it's kind of fun. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> you retain a new freedom <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to uh, just let let your mind flow. Yeah. So uh, so in hypnosis, I mean, we were talking about the fact that you know you are very um, what other people would call left brain, and you're saying doesn't exist. You're very you're a thinker. So how did you get into hypnosis yourself? I mean, we talked about it extensively before. Well, this is my first experience. But how, how, <laughs> how did it feel to you? Tell everybody how it felt. Oh, nothing. Nothing to be dreaded, nothing to be mm -hmm. uh, ashamed of or feared. It's a mm -hmm. new experience. Yeah. Did it feel normal <clears throat> to you? How can something you've done for the first time be normal? <laughs> well, it wasn't sleep. <laughs> It no, like it wasn't sleep, sleep at all, mm -hmm. and it wasn't trance, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, it is a recollection of a lot of material in the past, mm -hmm. and um, whatever you use to build your dreams on, it, yeah. it, it becomes expressed. Yeah. yeah, and you were able to see things that were very interesting. The council was really funny. And uh, that was kind without, of without resisting. Alba, too, because <laughs> I didn't want to follow all of her leading. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, this was kind of a fun experience. Let's go for it. Yeah, good. So you recommend it to others? Who are ready for it, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that everyone's ready for it, and you can't just come in off the street. Right. But um, I at least... I've been prepped on Elba for about six months. You've been watching, binging? Yes, yes. Another binge watcher. Right. <laughs> like you. <laughs> good, very good. So it's a, and it's a family affair. Yes, good. yes. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to uh, see me, you can go to albawyman.com and hopefully I'll get to meet you someday around the world. Bye. And, Thank and you. I don't see how you keep up your, your <laughs> energy, your interest, and your practice. Give me a hug. That's the best part. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Oh.